<clears throat> Hello, my name is Caden. This is Castle Tutelage, your home defense network. Um, today I uh, was on one of my favorite channels, uh, Tennessee Outdoor 9, and he had a pretty much a sum total of his entire embodiment of, I think, five years of testing bullets, testing it in ballistic gel, using IWBA standards. And from my perspective, he is absolutely the premier person when it comes to uh, testing bullets and ballistic gel using IWBA standards. I can't thank this guy enough over the years because he has opened my eyes to so many different things. Um, things that I thought were true were wrong. And when he taught me them, they became true for me. Now, you see these guns right here. This is basically from his testing um, is what I really uh, went for. I was a 40 Smith & Wesson guy for the longest time. And I just, I just thought it was the greatest bullet uh, since, uh, well, it doesn't matter, bad joke here. And what I have actually learned, especially in his last video, he basically encompassed the last five years of 9mm and the difference between standard pressure and high pressure uh, rounds and the grain involved in it. When you're dealing with the 9mm, there are so many different choices and there's so much information out there, you tend to get kind of lost in the forest. Too much information, too much analysis breeds paralysis. Now, Tennessee Outdoor 9 introduced me, introduced me to the IWBA, the International Wounds Ballistic Association. They are now a defunct organization, but they set up the standards on what... Um, you should look for in a bullet for, for stopping the threat. In the early 70s and 80s, the 110 grain bullet out of a 9 millimeter wasn't taking bad guys out of the fight. The Houston Police Department had a lot of information on that. So that became, you know, eventually that became the 40 Smith & Wesson. You know, we went through the 10 millimeter to this, down to the 40 Smith & Wesson. And it really became, you know, what what... What ammunition will take the bad guy out of the fight? And what Tennessee Outdoor 9 and others, um, Igmar, uh, uh, God, I can't remember his name. He is a CZ uh, shooter who has his own custom shot, Abdel. Uh, Ignis, something like Ignis Abdel. Something along those lines. He actually had a interview with Nutton Fancy on his uh, defensive round. And it turned out to be, um, do I have it in here somewhere? Oh, yeah, here. It turned out to be 147 grain, 147 grain 9 millimeter bullet. What he told me, what he did, what he said in the interview was that the 147 grain typically will penetrate the most at lower speeds. And it also gives you the lower felt recoil, uh, recoil and torquing. And I initially heard that. I go, huh, a heavier bullet having a lower felt recoil? Well, let me go check it out. And I made a video on it, and it's true. A 147 grain bullet uh, traveling uh, slow, like a 950 feet per second, was going to have a higher, a lower felt recoil than a... 127 plus P bullet. And, you know, my rationale was that I was getting older. I like the 40, but it has a reputation of being fairly snappy. And being able to control that, I am 47 now, being and, and always had strong hands. I'm looking into the future. But with, with Tennessee Outdoor 9, what he has done is basically said that technology has made all the bullets equal, especially when you're dealing with 
um, the 9mm, the 357 SIG, the 40, and the 45, where it all uh, gets about the same penetration and neg negligible um, uh, width, if you will. Um, the, the original, um, I forgot what he calls it, when the bullet it comes in and expands, you get that canal, and you get a pretty good um, ripping, if you will, of you know anywhere between four and six inches. And he's basically saying that it, I mean, well, I'm going to put a link on his last video. You know, the one thing about YouTube is there are going to be always creations of these great channels, and the natural conclusion to everything is his end. Now he is saying that he's going to be probably is going to be his last video on production because he has business obligations and expansions. Um, I, I know um, in previous channels of mine it takes a lot a lot of time. Uh, I don't do those heavy production numbers anymore. Um, it was a different topic that I used to do on YouTube that just took hours and hours and hours to do. And now, the way I've done these videos is like you and I were sitting on a bar stool somewhere and just chatting with each other. You know, some people get um, um, really nasty and say, all the information that you've given me could have been done in three minutes. Well, I'm not talking to you. That information, if I'm sitting on a bar stool, will not be conveyed in three minutes. Um, this is not a heavily produced kind of a scenario, which is um, not what I'm going for. Um, and hopefully a lot of you can see me, me and you sitting on a bar stool somewhere talking. And if we're having alcohol, of course, we're not concealed carrying at the time. But you, you know what I'm trying to convey. So his last video basically was going that he went and said, where I went about two years ago when I started buying these guns, okay? All these here are 9mm, chambered in 9mm. I've gotten rid of my 45. I've gotten rid of my 40s. I have gotten rid of my uh, 380 ACP. I have gotten rid of my um, my 9 by what is the uh, CZ82? The 9 by it was a 9 by 18. I've gotten rid of that also. It's been so long now, I can't remember. 919, 918, 917, yeah. So the 918, uh, 9 by 18. So they have ba he is basically say is saying that when you use IWBA standards, the 9mm is performing just as well as the 40 Smith & Wesson, just as well as the 45 ACP, the 357 SIG. It's just the, the initial channel because um, the higher the bullet, the greater the, the first channel is of, of damage um, uh, goes, and then it slows down quicker. For some reason, uh, when you look at the ballistic gel test, the faster the bullet, the lower the penetration because a lot of the energy is, is taken out within the first six um, inches of the ballistic gel. But one thing that what, what this does, the 147 grain bullet, is that it has enough mass in his last video to get through 14 inches of ballistic gel, okay? Uh, where the, the plus P lighter rounds are still doing adequate between 12 and 13 inches of, of penetration. Now, I, I, I want to just slightly go over. People will say, well, why do, the human body is, isn't wider than 13 inches. Why does the IWBA require you have at least 12 inches of penetration? Well, you're getting through other clothes, out of clothes. You're getting through, um, uh, like if, the, if the, uh, the shooter was coming at you and he had his, his hands up, you're trying to get through um, the arm, muscle, and bones, trying to get through the chest and the chest cavity, that kind of thing. That is why you need you know, you know, 12, in some cases up to 18 inches of penetration um, for you to take the bad guy out of the fight. And what you're looking for is, is this guy getting into the organs, um, this guy getting into the organs, and you're bleeding out. And once you bleed out, 
you lose consciousness and the person is taken out of the fight at that time. Unlike uh, Birdshot, do I have anything out here with a Birdshot? Unlike Birdshot, which only penetrates up to you know six inches in the ballistic gel. Okay, so you have witnessed a little bit of what Tennessee Outdoor Nine means to me. I've only had a, a few exchanges with him on his uh, on his website. He is going to be a big miss in the YouTube community as far as ballistic gel goes. Um, the one thing about his channel I would say is once you kind of get the gist of it, um, you don't need to go back. And uh, um, I don't think I really like saying that, but it's the truth why I don't go there all the time because it's the same stuff. I only get interested in it when um, he you know, test something that I'm interested. Uh, people ask me what I use. This is basically what I use. Um, jacketed hollow point, gold dot, 147 grain. Um, average velocity is somewhere around 950, 920 to 950. Um, subsonic round, so uh, I hope he really does well in his business, and I wish him all the best. He has opened my eyes like you wouldn't believe on so many different topics. Um, probably he's the single most source on YouTube who has opened my eyes in the past uh, four years or so. So he's going to be sorely missed for Castle Tulage. Hmm. My name is Caden. This is Castle Tulage, your home defense network. I hope this helped.